crazy miraculous stuff my whole life, right? And so when it comes to physical healing, it's just always been really easy for me when you grow up knowing God that way in my mind, right? Like, well, he can heal it. He can heal it. Um, and a year ago, I um, wound up in the best therapist's office in the world, this woman right here, um, because I knew that something in my brain was sick, but I had no idea what was going on. And um, it's probably been like one of the most challenging years of my life to understand how something could be living inside of me that didn't go away after 24 hours of trusting the Lord that it would go away, <laughs> right? And it was like, I don't understand. If God can regrow my knee, why am I struggling so much um, with my mental health? Um, and my therapy has been fantastic and it's been a really wonderful growing year. Um, but I think when Dan started talking about being self-focused, it changed something in my thinking. Um, I think at some point, and I guess I don't know exactly what I'm trying to say, but I think sometimes when we do the survival mode, like, God, why aren't you healing me? It turns into, like, what am I doing wrong, right? And as a child, I didn't do anything right or wrong to be healed. I just received it. And as an adult, I think sometimes we're like, what are we doing wrong? What are we doing wrong? What are we doing wrong? And I think when you maybe have, like, an invisible illness, it's that much more, right? It's like, I'm not understanding something. <laughs> I'm doing something wrong. I'm doing something wrong. And it actually becomes so self-focused. It's all about you, you know? And as Dan was talking about how um, when we walk with Christ, we stop thinking about ourselves because we die to ourselves, it just so shift. I was like, oh, I don't have to think about what's wrong with me. <laughs> That's amazing. Like, I don't have to pick out every thought. Was that an anxious thought? Was that an OCD action? You know, like, <laughs> you know, like just kind of obsessing over it and being able to think about laying those things down and just thinking about Christ. Like over the weekend, I started saying, okay, is that a thought that Christ has in his mind? Is that a feeling that Christ has in his body? And it was like, wonderful. I mean, when he said those things, I was like, oh my gosh, that's it. And so I thought, okay, well, I'm glad I learned this. This is really great. I feel different, you know. Um, but Monday morning, I usually go to work at 8 a.m. and I had to be up at 4.45 for work that morning. I'm not a morning person. <laughs> if anyone in here has ever dealt with depression, you do not get out of bed, okay? And so I was like, well, I don't know. We'll see. And so I set my alarm, and at 4.45 in the morning, I woke up with so much joy in my heart. And I wasn't, like, waiting to see if that happened. You know, I was like, I had this great weekend, and God, I'm just going to think about you. I'm not going to think about things that I could maybe fix. But I had so much joy in my heart. I didn't need coffee throughout the day. I was so excited to be at work. I didn't want to leave work. I was so excited to minister to people rather than to be thinking about if I offended someone or if my anxiety bothering someone else, you know, or like all of those self-focused thoughts that really are selfish and draw away from like who he is inside of me. And um, I don't know if this is making any sense. It was really vulnerable to share, so I'm sorry if it doesn't, but um, I'm just really grateful because I feel like all of therapy has been about having our mind renewed. And I think that focusing on him is the mind renewal, right? Yeah. Like that's the whole thing, just um, sitting on him. And so I'm just so grateful um, to have had that teaching this weekend. Jason, I just want to say, I love the part when he said, I owe you nothing, you owe me nothing. Yes. We're here for one purpose, and that is to shine. Boy, talking about, that's awesome. That is just awesome. Yeah, and the bottom line, really, the bottom line of it all is identity. Yes. You know, our identity, knowing who we are because of who he is. And who we are is who he says we are, not what all the rest of this stuff says. You know, we've let everything else determine how we are. You know, how we are is based, you know, in the world and the way we grew up. Like you said, homeschooled in the wrong home. You know, we were taught that we're, how we are is how things are going. Yeah. You know, that this has happened to me. And that didn't happen to me, and I didn't have this, or I did have that, and that's where I've drawn how I am, or 
this is what's wrong with me, or uh, this is the reason I have this. I'll get there. And so to to have our identity and and like she said, who we believe we are, based on all these outside influences and all this outside stuff that's happened, yes. or the ways that we've been, and all this stuff for that to speak into our hearts to determine who we are and how we are. To take all that away, and that's what I meant, baptism, putting all that in the grave. Yes. And then raising up. It's, it's like, now how I'm doing, this is what you saw Him have. How my doing has nothing to do with nothing except... Yes. Exactly. yes. Amen. Exactly. Period. Thank you. Right. I, I don't have to have you to like me or think certain ways about me for you to, you know, or this and I didn't have that, does not matter. Right. What he did, she did, didn't do, whatever, does not matter. I am who he says I am. Yes. 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 That's good. I am who he says I am. <laughs> Just like the He'll change it. Period. <laughs> and once I start believing that and living in that, and to me it's like, Bon said, their theme of the, everybody's talked about is now all this has created this relationship now. Yes. To where regardless of where we were, you know, uh, that what's birthed out of that, when two becoming one, what's birthed from this right here has to be heaven. Yes. <laughs> has to be heaven on earth. If, if we got this going on, you know, and I'm, I'm becoming like Him, you know, it's not about healing. It's about Him. Yes. But healing's in Him. Yes. yes. He's in me. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, you see what I'm saying? We're not going after healing. We're going after Him. That's right. Not that That's He has right. to be chased down. He's more eager and excited about it than we are. But I'm saying, we're not looking for prosperity and all that. You know, they got, we got all these circles and all this and going after that and all that. I'm, we're going after Him. Right. right. When you right. get Him, you've got all that. Yeah. That's right. Woo! Yes. If you're becoming more like Him, He owns the cattle on a thousand hills and He can speak gold into existence. If, you, if we're becoming more like Him, do we get poorer? No. Poverty? No. If we're becoming more like Him, are we getting sicker? No. Are we getting older and decrepit and going downhill the golden years, right? No. I'm just saying it's birthed out of this right here, Father. Thank you. That's what you talk about putting off the old and putting on Christ. Putting on. It's like that's the prayer right there. Putting on. Putting on. Thank you. That you've loved me. Thank you that I am who you say that I am. Thank you that all this stuff that tries to speak into me and try to invade me and rob from me, I'm putting all that off. It's not who I am. It's... So you start in on that. Look out. This is the second time here. We're glad to be here. Over a year ago, I've been going to Cancer Institute in Carterville, <clears throat> going for different blood work, seeing three different doctors. In October the 31st, I was diagnosed with leukemia, CML. And as soon as I heard, I called my church and said, I'm coming home. I said, well, they're in a meeting. I said, I'm here. I said, let's go right now. And I got to church and called for Jason. And his wife met me at the door, and we went to the room and we stood in a prayer for him. I started, I was crying, I was hysterical because I just found out. And I said, no, I'm not going to accept this. I'm not going to let you tell me what I can have. I said, you guys can say all you want. This is what I have. I never accepted it. I never accepted it. I said, this is what they say I have. I'm not going to accept it. I'm going to lay it down. I'm going to say, here you go, God. I, I don't want it. I've got things to do. Well, January 18th, I went back and saw the third doctor there. He said, what have you done? 
I said, what do you mean by that? He said, we've had three blood draws since October. Negative, negative, negative. And that's not a testimony. You go to the baby, you have the baby, and you tell the devil, I ain't accepting that. I'm not taking it. I'm giving it to God, and what he does with it is only what he wants done. It's his will. And we are here. I'm healthy. I'm happy. And I tell everybody my story because it's a testimony. This is not the first time. 2005, I got healed of myeloproliferative bone marrow cancer. So this is my second time God's healed me. He's got a purpose. And I'm waiting for Him to use me. So don't ever think what the doctor gives you, you have to accept. You just say, no, 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 no. I'm not accepting that. I lay it down. Thank you. I like to have 
it's so thick in the atmosphere, nobody have to lay hands on yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we've decided tonight that it is His will for us to be healed. Yes. Amen. Yes. It is His will for us to be healed. Spirit, soul, and body. Yes, yes. Total package. Yeah. Total package. Does anybody need some of it? Yeah. All right. Yes, sir. people if, that had raised their hand. He laid his hands on somebody, and I forget who it was, he was just praying for me. He got down and he said, hey, I'm healed. And somebody asked him what was wrong. He says, it's been my shoulder. It's been messed up since high school. And he just slung it all around, just done all kinds of stuff with it. He said, I didn't even ask for nobody to pray for me. It's just the anointing was so strong. It ain't about us. It ain't about us at all. It's about him. Very good. Are you praising or you want you want to say something? All right, now I can tell off by looking at your song, so you go. Really bad, and I said I believed in God. 
all my life. And I was like, Lord, what's going on here? What's wrong with you? I mean, why? Why me? You know, and I'm, I'm telling you, I mean, I would walk, I would just sit there and watch people walk with a breathing machine into, you know, to the restaurants and the churches and everything. I go to church. I could not sit like I'm sitting now. I would have to get up and run out. My kids used to have to go grocery shopping for me because I could not go into the store. That's how bad I was. Why? I don't know. I, I, I know it was the devil that really, really had me. I mean, he was really, really trying to take me under. I could not even stand here and talk like I am now. I could, but to make a long story short, what happened is I started praying to God. And I said, Lord, you might as well take me out of here. I might as well just die. Just take me out of here. Prove me, whatever. I can't live like this any longer. I cannot do it. And I refuse to do it. So what happened is uh, I prayed that prayer. I went into Walmart one day and I uh, got out of my car. I started walking up an aisle. I felt like I couldn't breathe. I was having really, really bad panic attacks at that time. I started praying to God, and I said, I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. As I said that, I started walking further and further and further down that aisle. I asked this guy where something was in the store. He said, it's at the back of the store. And I said, oh my God, I can't do this. What am I going to do? And it was like, the Lord, I just felt something pushing me, just like I was sitting here in this chair. And I just knew I just had to get up and had to tell this story. But I felt something pushing me, like, go, just go. So I, I would take a step further, a step further. And as I went, I found myself going further and further. And then the next few days after that, I found, I went into the store and I was like, I found myself at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning just running around. I didn't care. I was running all over the store. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I'm that crazy person. I'm here. I'm just like, oh, I'm just running all over the store. But I didn't care. You know what I'm saying? I got in my car. I drove to Colorado. I didn't tell anybody I was coming. My sisters were in Colorado, and I was just like, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm just going there. I don't care. I got up one morning, and I said, I'm going to Colorado. I was like, what the heck is wrong with you? It's God. God. I get in my car and I drive anywhere I want now. If I want to go into the store, I go anywhere I want. I had a, a mitra back prolapse. They told me I'll never get rid of it. That I had to take medication the rest of my life. I mean, literally, I'd be standing here in my heart a beat, like 300 beats a minute. Um, I was in it, you know, really, really messed up. I was on the way out, I do believe. But God healed me from that. The, the nurses yeah. and the doctors said, you don't just get rid of it. If you haven't had surgery, there's no way you can just get rid of that. And I said, I am healed. And I was like, you're not God. But my Jesus, my God healed me. I have it no more. I went and got tested. I went to three different doctors. They said, I don't know what's going on here. But you don't have that microbiome prolapse anymore. And I wasn't here when Dan was here, but, you know, when you guys said something, when you were talking about a healing, I thought, oh, my God, this is my chance. And I kept saying, you know, no, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't stand up. But I really felt like, you guys, there's somebody in this room, I really do feel like God is giving me that message that there's somebody that has panic and anxiety attacks. And I'm going to tell you what. If I can do it by the grace of God, you can too. All right. Everybody good? Anybody healed? Yeah. Anybody blessed in Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. All right. Well. <laughs> uh, you guys want to sing or no? You guys want to sing one to leave on, all right? All right. We want to hear Elvis sing the lighthouse. We want to hear Elvis sing the lighthouse, what they said. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'll say this so uh, if you need it if you need shoulder heal don't leave all right you hear me nobody's listening to me are they? <laughs> if you need shoulder heal tonight don't leave you hear me yeah. everybody say I hear you, I hear you. all right all right love y'all <laughs>